What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Thursday night edition. It's April 11th, 2024. The Phillies have started. The Sixers are ready for their playoff run. The Flyers trying to push for the playoffs. And the Eagles getting ready for that NFL draft. You know what time it is. It's time to do fourth and go. Philly 4-4. Four, four. So much more. I'm Dave Gleckner. That's Mark Tomasini. What's up, brother? What up? What up? I am Sixered up. I am Sixered up. I'm excited to get into that. I see you got the new City Connect hat. Obviously, you're in on it pretty quickly. Gotta say, I like the hat. I really do like the hat. We'll get we'll get to more of that. But I like to go. Yo, the best part is, is yeah, the, the hat's the best part. But I will tell mm -hmm. you. All right, let's just get into it. The City Connect jerseys rolled out last Friday, and they come in hot tomorrow. As the Phillies are going to wear them for the first time on Friday, playing the Pittsburgh Pirates. I will tell you, I hated them the first time they leaked. Um, whether it was a China View, whatever was coming out, I didn't right. like them. I I went. I'm going to tell you, I don't hate them as much anymore. Right. I like the color scheme, the hat, obviously, with the Liberty Bell stars, and plus the uh, city silhouette, like the the, the skyscrapers. Skyline. skyline, yeah. I think that that's sweet. The jersey color scheme is actually pretty sweet. I just don't like the font. I think that's where I landed on. I got my son. He was, like, all hyped up, and, and he had some money. I said, all right, I'm going to get you. I got him a Trey Turner. The fucking number's a question mark. It's yeah, not a seven. Right. Like yeah. that's embarrassing, but everything up like I'm cool, like because we're gonna laugh about it. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm actually at like I dig, but I'm not. I dig the color scheme now. I dig the way they've mixed in the 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 Philly like traditions and landmarks. I just don't love the graffiti like yeah, fun. yeah. I'm actually on a similar page as as you. I the one thing I don't love like I love the navy. I think they should have went navy all the way up. Yeah, making it you know one of those good point um, like that things. faded. Yeah, the faded the font and they should have just went all navy from top to bottom because it's like three quarters of the way. You might as well go the whole way and change the font. Even if you just do it to the Phillies font, I don't care. If you just put the Phillies font there, you still have the colors and you do like the blue and yellow outline on the Phillies font and you or like. Or even the colors, kind of like the hat scheme, like the way you have it on the hat, have that color, have that light blue in Phillies with a little yellow and I like light that blue. idea. Do yeah. that it's all navy, and I think you have more of a. It's not as jarring. Just really, the font is the biggest thing, but I like all navy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that that'd be cool too. I get why they tried to mix in this blue because yeah. I guess it's part of the city flag. Um, yeah, I and, and listen. It was a nice try. I think Harper came out and said he was thinking it was being like red, green, and, and black, maybe like a fanatic yeah. type look right. to it. And I think that we'll see something like that down the road. Actually, yeah. yeah, and I'm okay with the new age font. It's just I I think the numbers are the ones that I hate the most. I, I can live with a little bit of the letters, but I think I hate the number. And I like the word Philly. I actually like like we we it's different. We have Phillies. Right. We. You know, Philly, like I like that part. Well, but yeah. Just done Philly in the Philly font, just like yeah, you know, like that, that would be cool. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, and but, then the two stars that are yellow. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, we could have helped them out, bro. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, I remember being like, I hate these; they're awful. But I've definitely yep. come around on them more. I definitely see where they're going. And can understand better. It's the font. The font is the biggest thing. Like I could live with the transit, the blue transition that I was talking about. But the the one thing is just the the numbers and then the front font. Yep. Those in in that order. Yep. Yeah. But hey, we're gonna see them loud and proud tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm excited I'm, to see how it looks out. I, yeah. I was just yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. I really think because the thing is, like I like the Phillies uniforms, but they're. Very plain. I mean, they just played in their powder blues tonight and stuff like that. And that's an older. They're sick. The powder they're, blues are sick. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I like their and I like their burgundy too that they did. The one where McCutcheon is in the glasses and stuff like that. Like I almost wish that they switch between the powder blues and the burgundies. And I'm not a red guy, but it definitely works. But this is get the rid of the gray. Time. The, the gray so dull. Pinstripes, right. I get it. Even yeah. the cream you could get rid of anymore. I'm with you. Bring right. back the burgundies as your regular road jersey or something. Right. I agree. I think what would be, I think it's, or not what would be, I think the best thing about this is this is the first time that they're wearing something new and really yeah. different that we've never seen. Like it's the cream. 
Which was what, like when they opened the stadium? Like right. 20 years that, ago? Yeah. yeah, but that that even to me was just like it's a cream version of the gray uniform. Like I know they I tried. Know. Like this is the first real like jarring change that they've done. And I think even though like I know like for our lifetimes, we've mostly grown up in, you know, the the gray and the and the pinstripe. But even looking back at the 80s and, you know, their schemes there, this is the first real jarring change that we've seen from this team, you know, in general. I agree. Really. So I they went pretty interesting to see what it looks like playing baseball in it. Yeah, they went pretty drastic, which is cool. Like, I, I'm going to dig it. Let's see it tomorrow. Right. But for the most part, the hat, I think, is the best. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm get, I'm. I can't wait to see it with the pants and the cleats and the belt and everything. So yeah. I'm excited for tomorrow. Um, let's do a little love hate right now. So the Phillies have opened the season now seven and six and listen better than probably they have in the past couple of years. Still not great, but, um, seven and six, we will take, um, especially starting two and four, losing the first two series of the year. They won the next two on the road and now started tonight's four game series with the win against the 93 pirates. So seven and six. Good. I'll start with one thing. I love you. Give me one thing you love and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to the hate. One thing I love right now is the starting pitching. Um, You know, unfortunate that Zach Wheeler doesn't have a win yet because he's been awesome. Um, But Ranger Suarez is going out there. He's 2-0. Thank God we've seen him before May because he has been dominant. Sanchez, one good game, one game, but still Nola, two really good games, one bad game, um, and Turnbull. Unbelievable. Like in Taiwan, take your time, bro. We are good right now. Right. I mean, we're not going to ride the Turnbull train all year like this, no. but we're good right now. And yeah, the starters are rolling in with like a top five ERA in the league. So I love the starting pitching right now. Okay. I agree. I uh, Ranger, six innings, two hits, two walks, eight strikeouts, no runs, solid line tonight. Really good to see him doing that, like you said, doing that this time of the year. Um, Brandon Marsh. That's where Brandon I would have gone. Yep. Brandon Marsh, because the whole thing with him was, I'm trying to think, was he, when we traded for him, no, it wasn't Monia. Mo, we got Marsh for. Oh, Hoppy. Uh, so it's Syndergaard, right? Well, they were two separate trades. I thought Marsh um, they was. They were. They were. I thought, actually, I do think Marsh was Moniac and Syndergaard was Ohapi. But that, that's that, what it. That, that might be it. it yeah. yeah. So, and everyone was like, always outfield for outfield. That's the reason right. I thought it was that way. Yep. And then right when Moniac first went over, he got hot. He did. And he was playing well. And we were seeing a little better version of Marsh, like his half year. And then last year, he was about 286 hitter, which was better than anything he did in LA. And Marsh, mm-hmm. you know, some people know, some people don't. He was actually a pretty high prospect for them. He was a very good player. And he had a lot of potential. But for whatever reason, which seems to be the case in LA, they just don't, they waste talent with the Angels. I mean, you see Trout's out there by himself, but like they obviously can never do anything. I mean, his average was 286 for that rest of the year after the deadline. And then the same yep. thing next year with uh, Kevin Long. And you see what the, you know, he's doing now in his second full season, essentially a full season now that he's going to have with the Phillies. And I am pounding the the door that he should be an everyday starter now. I think he's earned. I agree. Until, I agree. In, in, if, unless you see him regress big time, especially now we're seeing we're having a hole out in right field, but I'll get to that. Are you, are you, I, think, I think Marsh has earned and deserves to go against lefties, righties, and play every day. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Um, to this extent, you know, you can find a way. He can play center field on certain nights. He can play left field. Yep. And to your point, you, you could probably fit him in right, but we can we – can, yeah, I know we're going to get there. But when I'm looking at the splits this year, yeah, he hasn't hit great against lefties. He's 182. He only had 11 at bat so far. He's tearing up righties. Three yep. homers, you know, I have four homers now, um, yep. over 400. So – and tonight was the oppo Bapo. He's yep. been – you know, outside, like, Trey's been okay, but not the extra base hits. JT's been pretty good, JT's but been he's good. been carrying the offense. It's been three right. of them. That's about it. So, I give you – I think we both hit on the head with the 
with the loves here. I, yeah. You know what? I'm going to let the layup go to you. Um, so I'll give you my hate and leave the other hate for you, um, which is obvious for all of us Phillies fans. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, I still I hate Kyle Schwarber in leadoff. I oh, just hate, okay. hate, hate. And, you know, in years past, I told you I, I lived with it a little bit because last year it started with Stott, but when they switched to Schwarber about 30, 40 days in, right, gave him yeah. a little spark. Yeah. And, you know, it just – the team needed to just, just ride that spark. Like, it's just – we're getting to the point now. Baseball is no longer about, you know – a lineup that's built through, you know, top to bottom. Okay. We roll lineups over where a pitcher's at the bottom. You need a guy that at, at that top spot, it's so important when people are on base that he's not sitting there striking out, which is what this guy's doing. Um, he's got a bunch of singles this year. I get it, but he's still batting right around that Mendoza line. He's a – if he gets on, he's a plug on the base path. Yeah, I, I just can't do it anymore. Like, we got to find something else because this just does not – freaking work for me uh it, it's it's an absolute joke that we have him still sitting up there because every time i see you know and it's very rare that rojas gets on I, he's stuck with sure we're not being able to get him over or move him anywhere right back to 12 this year now um after a year of 190 something I, I how can you win as a baseball team consistently having your leadoff hitter over a stretch of two years batting pretty much 200, and then we go back to 2022, 218. I know we're getting the homers. Get them when they're on base because right now these few and far-betweens are killing us, yeah. killing us. I'm telling yeah. you, it's I, I'm done with the Schwarber at leadoff. It ain't working. Right. I agree. If, if he's hitting 250, 260 consistently, I, I consider With the it, walks. Yep. Yeah. But it's, just, it's, it's, it's not happening right now, everyone's. So you're going to hear – the argument there, you know, they have a 600 winning percentage when he's lead off. Great. That's it. I, got, I, I, I feel like you can do more. I feel like you can do more. You and can. I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but if we didn't like Bryce Harper was out at that point, Ranger Suarez was out in the beginning of last year, I'm talking about. So all those things that were taking place, he came back around the same time that everybody started getting back. That's when Taiwan started pitching better. And he gave you that month of June. Like, remember, it was June 2nd, right? That they put him in leadoff. I so agree. everything started going gangbusters for them and it helped. And then Turner at the end of the, you know, in August, he he turned on. So it only yeah. made it better. So I agree with you. I'm in the camp of we need to move Schwarber down the line. Yeah, I, I hate it. Play that needs I to just be. hate I, it. Yeah. yeah. I, I could know. get like, and I it's not like the way March is swinging. I could get him one. I mean, he's not your typical, but since he's got the most homers on the team, I probably don't want him there. But right. Stott, 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 and I know Stott hasn't been great, um, but he's coming around, hit a homer tonight. Um, yeah. Let me lay it up to you. What's your hate? Nick Castellanos' swing, his swing, everything. I know. I know. I his know. plate I discipline, his yeah. swing. I'm with you. I mean, he, even this year, it's what I think he has like six or seven hits, all singles, like yeah, a 152. 152 average. He, um, look, I, I'm a, I'm a Castellanos fan. I love the way that he's played in the past and he showed it last year, what he was able to do in Cincinnati and Chicago and Detroit. But, you know, for whatever reason, he just hasn't really been able to put it together for a full season here. He looks like, um, when he first got here, he's oh, got a swing where work. the ball's not even remotely close to the plate. And I mean, talking, we're talking, he's swinging shoulder high. Yep. And the ball is a slider in a way, two mm -hmm. feet from the dirt. Like it's, it's, it's one of those where you're like, what are like, did you just say I'm going to swing at this pitch no matter mm -hmm. what? Like, is mm -hmm. that really what I, I know you have in the majors, you have a split second to make a tr decision whether you are going to swing it there or not. But I mean, it looks like he's going in blind. It, it, it really, I, looks like he's just like, I'm going to throw my bat out there. If I get something great, if not, Oh, well, like, because he's always been an aggressive hitter. That's one thing I like about him. He's going to go after it, but see when you get into stretches like these, this is where you're a detriment to yourself and to the team. Right. He hadn't struck out more than 152 times in his career in a season. Last year, he went for 185. Yeah. This year, he's on pace for about 170. I bet you if that pace, the way that you're watching him swing, I'm watching him swing, some ball landed six inches in front of the plate, and he swung. Um, so he's just out there guessing. Um, he could get to 200 this year. Now, 
that the only way he gets there is if the Phillies keep sticking with him. There has to be a point. I know 13 games is tough, but it's yeah. not 13 games to me. It was seven in the Arizona series last year when he went one for 28. Um, it, this is a combination. I watched him in the spring. He hit under 200 in the spring doing the same yeah. dumb shit. Yeah. Um, it, this isn't this isn't 13 games. This is probably about 40, um, and it's bad. And I don't see it. I'm sorry. I don't see it changing. The swing was always an uppercut, ugly, top, you know, top spin heavy swing. And even tonight when he got a hold of one kind of and it hooked foul, it was 30 feet short of the fence. Like the power's not even there. It's gone. This guy just fell apart in front of our eyes. And I, I'll hold on for a little bit. Yeah. Cody Clements was ripping the cover off the ball in spring training. There's other people that deserve a chance over this shit right now because it is if you're going to actually hold on to Rojas and try and develop him which I don't agree with but right. I, I can live with it because the defense is there the castle has no defense either now this new scoreboard screwing him up in right field and can't catch a ball out there that's near yeah. the fence like it's awful every like the, every aspect of his game is atrocious yeah. I and, but if you're going to have a hundred hitter in Kyle Schwarber at the top and you're going to have a hundred hitter in Rojas at the bottom, you can't have Castellanos too. Another one hundred, you know, a one hundred and fifty guy. Yeah, at I least agree. Schwarber gives you the power. At least Rojas gives you the defense. This guy gives you not. He has seven singles, no yeah. extra base hits. Yeah, can't play defense. Can't yeah. run. There's nothing he gives you. Right. Ah, oh, I'm with you. I hate I, 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 I give him an effort for his defense, and I think like effort. especially in the playoff two years ago, he's 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 done it. But it's yep. but. He's not, not getting rid of anything right now. No, right now. The the one like by Cincy, two balls to the fence, and they, they yeah. should call him. He doesn't should even know him. what he's right. He, he's not even like lining up with the wall and getting himself figured out. He's just like, uh, like, yeah. And he blamed the new scoreboard. I mean, whatever. But I, I do didn't think, that. That, yeah, yeah, because they got a brand new one out in right field. But yeah, I, I, I do, um, I want to give him the Trey Turner treat. I do. I, I would like fans to, to stand up, try and cheer him on. Like you said, as a person with – he's always been great to the kids. He always hangs around, um, supports the team, supports the fans. Um, he is good in the community. He's a guy you want to cheer for, but he sucks at baseball right now. Yeah. So I want to give him the Trey Turner treatment, but I'm telling you, if it's – where are we, April 11th today? 11th, yeah. If it's May 4th, I'll give you three more weeks of this bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, something's got to be done. I mean, or you know, I like here's the thing. I and you know, more to my point that Brandon Marsh should be playing every day. I think if anything, you throw Merrifield out there, give him a couple days off, just let him reevaluate. Like, I know sometimes you need to, you know, um, you need to get it together and just try and hit through it and 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 you know keep going through this slump. But I think he needs a break. Not that he. I agree. He, I agree. But well, physically, I think he just needs to step out of the box. It just needs to be nowhere near it. I right. agree. But you want to talk about somebody that's worse than Castellanos? Whit Merrifield's right there. That one forty-three with just three singles, no extra base hits himself. He sucks too. So mm -hmm. great, great, great signing there because this guy, uh, he's not going to get any better at thirty-five years old. So he's batting one forty-three and has given us nothing as well. So I. I hear you, but I give it a break yeah. for someone else. Like I'm saying, um, maybe give Cody or I mean Pache. Um, yeah, something. yeah, that's, that's right. Another, right, Pache. Pache had some good catches on Washington against Washington on Sunday. Yeah, um, really, really good defensive plays. So um, I'm still kind of a fan of him and want to see. I that think, develop. but yeah, he know. deserves. He has he has the potential. He was a highly touted prospect. He's guy. Give him a shot. You kept him on the team. Use him. Yep. Because I like I our two loves and our two hates, and let me just lead into this. Seeing how Cassie's playing, I, do, I don't see any way the Angels take him as part of the deal, but they'll, they'll find a way to offload him somewhere. But does it make you re-enter the talks about Mike Trout? Because it does for me. It really does. Mike Trout has like six homers, I think, is leading the league. Yeah, he's carrying it out. He's ripping the cover off the ball right now. They still suck. Um and so the Angels could sell high, high, high. I mean, he was going to be high anyway, but now high, high, high uh, before he gets hurt. I, I think you got to re 
Yeah, I think you gotta pick up the phone and re reestablish those talks about Trout and Philly because it it's a hole. They have a hole almost in two outfield positions right now. Right. I mean, I think that I'm always gonna want Mike Trout here. I yeah, know, he's my favorite player outside of Philadelphia. He's agreed. You know, just love everything about Trout, what he does. He's being wasted out there. It's truly insane. It's 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 a murder. It's it's highway robbery. The fact yep. that he's been out there for so long and they've done absolutely nothing. And you know, he is it has a Mickey Mantle-ish type career and can't you know snip the playoffs and just gets no press out there. Like it's it's really a like not that baseball can intervene, but like how they just haven't gotten anything out of him being out there. Like they can't market him because of it. They can't do anything. Now, the one thing I, I thought I heard is that he, I almost think that he doesn't want to be here because like it would be too much pressure for him being around here. Did, did it, do you hear I, that? Yeah, I, got, I, don't, I thought I heard something along those lines that but, I just don't think he wants to ruffle feathers. I, I, I think he'd be fine playing here, but he, he just doesn't, doesn't, he's just not that guy that's going to force a trade. That's, that's more how it came well, out. And then people sure. use that. Yeah. Well, I hope that, yeah, I hope that's the case. I hope he will want to play here. I mean, this is his hometown team. He's always here, you know, not hometown, but we know Millville. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course, I'm always going to enter it. Now, I'm always just afraid that he's like one back injury away from being, you know, on the shelf or an injury away from being on the shelf. But then again, same thing with Bryce. So might as well just roll the dice and have both of them here and hope that at least one of them stays upright. I don't know. Yeah. Like that that's not I'm not worried about what we would give up for him like even if it cost a painter or whatever like what have you. But I'm at the point I I could give painter. I really could. I'm not giving painter a bell no. and Crawford and Rojas. Like I could maybe two of the four and hopefully Rojas is one of them. That's fine. Right, um, if you go know painter Rojas I'm good. I know I got to give up to get something. And I totally get that. And I'm, you know, baseball, I know baseball, like these prospects don't pan out 70% right. of the time, like trade them and, and nothing. Like I think painter can be something, but I'm okay. I'm to get a Mike Trout. Right. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. And then maybe you, I mean, you need some other pieces. I get it, but if you start the the talks with Painter and, and Rojas and fit in some other maybe younger pieces, I think you could get there. Because the one thing one thing I was thinking, I want to see how he's been playing so far this year. Who's that? Before I drop the name. Uh yeah. Okay. Well, I was saying you can say Garrity. No, 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 no. Not about trading, about yeah. about somebody that we could have brought in. About maybe if we went Bellinger. Bellinger's batting 191 right now. Yeah. So the one thing I was thinking is two years, 50 million. I think you could have pulled that off. You could have had him here. Could have had a, a good fielder and a good hitter. I think in this lineup, he would do more than what he's doing with Chicago. I think he'd have less pressure on him. Um, that's somebody that I was thinking, like, what if they did pull the trigger on Bellinger? Like, you bring in a real hitter, hope that he doesn't get the yips and yeah. changes things, and then he's your Castellanos, but who can actually play? Yeah, I mean, but they just – I don't know the rules in baseball as far as a free agent and the ability to trade. I know in basketball, if you sign a free oh, agent – yeah, no, 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 no. I'm saying that, that that's done because I'm saying like that they should have looked into like oh was, yeah, like, were surrounding it. I'm saying that about actually going after it and really making the play for Bellinger. Like we were, you know, Boris was getting us involved because of Bryce and everything like that. Like maybe we can strum up that the Phillies are going to come in, yeah, go up their offer. But if the Phillies actually considered that, I think that would have been great. But it's tough because then you you have. Then you have two situations. You have the Castellano situation. You have the Taiwan situation where you kind of were hoping to bring in better to get out of money. But like when everybody was to linking us to Jordan Montgomery, 
to yeah. take over Taiwan's spot, but then you're paying Taiwan 54 million. Same thing with Castellanos. You'd be bringing Bellinger to do what Castellanos does, and you still are on the hook for another uh, 40 or 60 million with Castellanos. So yeah, I think he's got you would be here. hurting yourself at the same time to. Well, my point was you would probably find if you're going to make a trade and, and I free agents long going, I, I, yeah. I got what you're yeah. saying. That, that's well saying like in revisionist history. I, I know, but I'm looking forward. Like, yeah, yeah but yeah. I hear you. But I'm yeah. just saying, but what I, gonna, you would have, have to, to do yeah. is this team, when you come in with these 25, um, and, and Dombrowski knows this. These 25 are not your 25 by September. Right. A lot of times it turns into you, you got you need like 40 to 45 players uh, for 162 games. So they're going to make moves. My eye is on the apple of Mike Trout. And if if they could do that, they would probably move Castellanos somewhere else and pay, eat all the salary. Yeah. They wouldn't let him just sit here. But right. we'll see. They're going to have to do something because they need to infuse some offense into that outfield. But other than that, uh, you know, back to the basic – you know, first 13 games, I, I will take seven and six. Um, it is a schedule that's kind of friendly over the next week or two as well. Braves lost Spencer Strider for the year. Braves got beat 16 to four today by the New York Mets, who hadn't scored like 16 all year. Um, so, I mean, the NLEs could actually be competitive now that yeah. the Braves are rolling out Charlie Morton as number one because Max Fried doesn't look, I mean, He's, his but, ERA was 18 in his first two games. Yeah, like it's um, I don't know, man. I wide think like, it, it's it's wide open. The Strider thing has made things a lot more even uh, going forward here. So the Phillies out to seven and six. I think you know get this offense clicking, keep this starting pitching, which I think will be really good all year, and get the bullpen just kind of tweaked, figured out. Like uh, Hoffman Blue saved the other night, but then came back and saved the next game tonight. They were able to hold on, just allowed one run. So I think the bullpen's good. I still think it's good, but it hasn't been great yet. Still not the best in baseball. No, no. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you don't know who your closer is. Right. I mean, it's, but, it, uh, it's so Alvarado is the the fault. Yeah, but they used him in the eighth other night bringing it home. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, but – yeah. I, and I do think the addition of Kirk Green, who should be back any day now, if he didn't come back up tonight, I didn't see. Um, I think that would be a big deal. But that's the Phillies talk for now. We got four sports in this town, so we got to move on to the next one. And let's talk Philadelphia 76ers. Mark, we weren't on there last week, but I went to the OKC game. Uh, the return of the chosen one, we'll call. Um, but the process himself, Joel Embiid, back with a new do. But more importantly, He's back just in time for a playoff push. Big win in Miami following the OKC win, which was huge. Then big win over the weekend. Well, actually, two of them, let's say. Um, one in Memphis and then the double OT thriller with Maxi dropping 52 in San Antonio. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're on the perch of the sixth seed. I don't think they'll get there. It's going to take a miracle. Um, but not, not Miami, as losing, much of a miracle as you think. Well, Indiana needs to lose both games. Uh, I, two, was, I, no, I think is it? Oh. Well, they got Cle their their game ahead of us, and they got Cleveland, right. and they got Atlanta, and they beat us two to one in the season series. So I thought, yeah, I know. I could have swore that it was we win both. Atlanta wins both because then Cleveland loses because that would mean I I, I would have. Oh, yeah, you, you're looking at the Cleveland aspect of things. That's possible yeah. too. Cleveland could yeah. drop to seven. But right. Cleveland, we were two and two. So I did look that up. We were two and two against Cleveland. So then it comes down to Eastern Conference. So yeah, then we're cheering for Cleveland. I think their game, Indiana, and they might have Atlanta. Yeah. You might so, be right. But Miami losing last night means we went out, we get set. Right. So that's at least promising. And I'll tell you now with Giannis getting that Achilles, the seven is so important. I, I mean, Giannis, they might find a way to play him. Sure. But I'm not that scared of Milwaukee anyway. Agreed. With between Giannis's uncertainty, you know, they haven't really been they've been atrocious in fourth quarters. Doc Rivers coaching them. It's it's not it's even fun. it's it it I mean, I can't I I can't believe he gets to coach this team and he's just dragging them down with I I just don't understand any of it. You know what? Maybe it's the Orlando thing. Orlando lost two in a row. Maybe we can catch them out because we play them tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, we're only a game behind Orlando. 
That yeah. might be it. That would be huge. If we could get up in the sixth seed. Yeah. I mean, it's, the Knicks are tough, but, like, no Randall. Right. That changes things because he's out for the – And OG might be out. To, like, he's been – that might be the key there because the Bucks have – I mean, the Magic have us and the Bucks. Yeah. So, I got to see here. Um, Eastern Conference record – they're two up on us, but they would lose those two and we'd be yeah, I think we that might be the there might be more pass than I thought. I thought the Indiana was uh dead, but Cleveland, Orlando, we might have a pass. But I mean we could be as high as the fifth seed, which is crazy when all is said and done. That would be, but then I I kind of like I want to be in that three, I want to be in that range to play yeah. Milwaukee in the second round. Yeah. Um but what, what what's your take right now? On what you've seen with Joe, because there's people out there saying, you know, he doesn't look, you know, all the way back. Is he good enough? I, my opinion, he's good enough. He's still fantastic. I think what he go 38, 11, and seven the other night or 38, 11, nine. Like, I, I don't care what it is. They're a different team with him and they look good. Yeah. I And I think it's actually translated to that game in San Antonio, but I'll get to that. Um, this team is playing inspired. Look, Embiid. Yes, he's coming back a little slow, but we got him back at the right time. And I said this back when it happened. This, if he came back early enough, this would benefit this team. I agree. Going forward, because barring any knock on wood, I'll just use my head as wood for now. I I know my couch or something probably is wood at the bottom. <laughs> but barring any unforeseen circumstance or something stupid or crazy, it's still possible because it's happened in the playoffs before. This might be the healthiest he is, but as long as his MCL is okay, which so far so good, and he's and he's looking better, and he's gotten his conditioning already up and stuff like that. This is the healthiest Embiid that we'll have going into the playoffs, and this is the most gelled team that I think we'll have going into the playoffs. You don't have Harden, you don't have Simmons, and I think that right there is big. What Embiid and Maxi have created together, I think they they work. They work great together. Maxi knows his role and Bede knows his role. Like and Bede needs to be the star, but Maxi is the guy who lifts him up, pushes him up. And you see a personality change with Embiid. Yeah. I don't yep. think you're going to see those game seven that like the game seven in Boston last year. I don't think you're going to see that again. You're not, you're not going to see Harden just give up because when Harden gave up and Bede gave up, like you could just tell the air was taken out of the ball. Maxi doesn't have that in him. That's not in his bag. He is as real as it gets as a basketball player. I really think he puts his blood, sweat, and tears, heart on the line, everything on the line. And he's got a big contract that he's playing for. And he's not a guy like that, but I'm just saying, like, he yeah. can really, you know, get, he can earn that $200 million this year, which is insane to think about. But I'll tell you that double overtime game against San Antonio, especially in that second overtime. The defense was moving, and they are. And here's what I love about Nick Nurse, which is the antithesis of Doc Rivers. Nick Nurse trusts young guys. He now is he forced to play the young guys right now, especially when Embiid's out and Harris is out, for certain. But you saw that San Antonio got tired, and Sixers kept moving. They were moving around on defense, and they were they got so many steals. They you could see like when. Maxi made that lay in to to tie the game or tie the game to bring it to overtime. You could see that obviously the mood changed for San Antonio, but they they yep. held strong in that first overtime. But in the second overtime, they lost it. The Sixers willed them to death. The Sixers were just getting in front of every ball. They were getting in front of every passing lane. And I think if they can translate that defense especially when Embiid's on the floor. I think it's going to do a lot of things for this team moving forward. I think you're going to see a lot better defense. I think they're all getting comfortable and playing with each other. And you see guys like Oubre, and Oubre's not young, but like K.J. Martin step up. Ricky Council step up. He might he like, you know, he was very clutch in that San Antonio game. Again, San Antonio, we know they stink. Like, we get it, but they have women. Well, but they got Wemby. Like, they're good. Right. But, but they balled that night. And Nate yeah. kept tough because thing and two or three huge calls went against them that were BS and they still overcame it. And it's a young yeah. team and Nick nurse's toolage is just riding them through. 
I'm so excited to see what Nick Nurse can do with this team in the playoffs because if it's if he can make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, regardless of who they have to play to get there, it just shows what an indictment that between Brett Brown, Doc Rivers, James Harden, and Ben Simmons was to Joel Embiid and this team. You, I, you, you hit it on the nose. Um, Nick Nurse is a just absolute breath of fresh air for this team. Uh, he's an absolute – like. You know, the, the the annex on the sideline, I get because, you know, he just cares. He's trying to win games. They all do um, it. And, and they all do it. And, and he did it before, you know, in Toronto. And it would drive us up a wall. But, you know, I like it now because I know he's just caring for his team. And he, he's out there trying to win basketball games, right? So, um, I think I, I would love to see how he could coach in a seven-game series. I would. And I'm with you. Like, I just got to. I got to get there. And I think in the seventh spot, um, you know, you'll obviously have two chances to get there. And I think they will get to one. But we need, hopefully, to get up into the six or five, like you said. The addition of Joe, the key to getting back, and I'm like, I'm with you. Like, you just needed it for him to um, work his win back. And his, but to play with these guys, he didn't even know who campaign was. I mean, I, of course, he knew who he was right. just from – but Buddy healed. He he hadn't played a second with those guys because they all came on the roster after yeah. he got hurt. So um, it's very important for them to kind of find this period of, of gelling together. And I think they're finding it, like you said. And that game without him, to win that game, I mean, they were down. They went up a little early, then they were down. And, like, to hold on and win that game, that's going to do a lot for their camaraderie. So th- this is big – Easy win against Detroit the other night. They didn't even have to press on the button or the gas any. Orlando tomorrow is huge. It's huge. It's huge for a lot of reasons, but you might be able to rest guys on, on Sunday. We'll, we'll see because oh, Sunday's what? Is it Brooklyn? I believe so. It's 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 a, it's a softer matchup, whoever it is, and I felt like it might have been them. If you double-check that. It, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's Brooklyn. It's Brooklyn yeah. at home. Yeah, at home. Cool. But yeah, man, we will see. It's um, I'm excited for this run simply because there's no pressure right now. Like, right. what are they going to do when they're not the, the favorite? They're not looked at as, but they're looked at as the dogs. Remember when the Eagles won the World Series? All right, the Super Bowl dogs. Yeah. Right. When the Phillies won, I mean, they weren't all fully thought of as like a powerhouse, but they won. Like, let's right. give these Sixers a chance. Seven seed. 60, they got a chance. Yeah, I mean, I think everything lines up nicely for them. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm extremely excited for this run. I mean, look, I'm I'm hopelessly devoted to this Sixers team. I'm hopelessly devoted to the process. Like, that's just, you know, I, I'm yeah. behind yeah. by it. And I and now, like in the in the way that the circumstances are, like it almost seems like they would do it in a year where and be. I know year and like it's not saying that they are going to win it but like this is the year where they, but but it it's does. not luke thing they have the coach they well, have they also have the deepest team i've ever seen them have they, yes maybe not the most talented because of the other players that they've had in the star power roles but i mean kyle lowry now that uh, adding him yeah um you get a lot out of the guys like paul reed like you've already said Ubre. Ubre. Uh, yeah yeah, yeah they, he, there's he, I loved his signing from the moment they did it. I remember in like July being yeah. like, "Wow, we haven't it was a proven yet?" And it, and it and it, I like. I think he could be a cog going forward. Like I, I think he's a guy you could bring back. And then I read an article: the Sixers technically will have one player on their roster mm-hmm. after this offseason. I mean, Reed. I guess you got to Reed is like, Reed is technically well. I think. It's a pl- it's a, it's a fully team option. If they make it to the second round, I think he becomes it, it becomes a fully guaranteed contract. You certainly might have to, yeah. but yeah, I'm with you. But you know they're going to sign Maxi, but right. they really could go into this offseason with about three players and yeah. and fifty million in the bag. Like yeah. it, I think it right now, if they go in with Reed and Embiid, they might have sixty six or sixty eight, and that's yeah. without the cap. Like that's this year's cap. It might move a little bit. So. um it's going to be an interesting team next year. They're, they have some, again, they have some options. They can bring some guys back, team options. But it's really 
they're going to look a lot different come next year. But hopefully some of these guys like Uber are on a prove it deal where we do actually bring him back. Well, the the one thing that I was hearing is, you know, everyone right now has the Sixers linked to Paul Reed or Paul George. Oh, Paul Paul George. Yep. But if they can't do that, there's not a lot of options. Now, I did see something today that Donovan Mitchell, they might, that Cleveland might have to make a choice about Donovan Mitchell and they might have to trade him off. So that might be somewhere that you look to. Um, because if you really don't bring in a star, you they're just going to like spend you, they're going to give out like a bunch of 15 million dollar a year contracts to good players, not great players and you're not going to have any stars around Maxi and Embiid and you're just going to kind of have a little upgraded version of this year's team. Um yep. so it'll be interesting to see how things play out, but you know, in the NBA it gets weird star shakeout. Like that's why this whole Mitchell thing coming about or stars, usually the, not everybody that you see, like you go, Oh, this guy's not available. And then they become available just in a weird way. So I, I, I agree. I mean, yeah. You, you, and George isn't even available yet. It's, it's a case. He has right. to opt out, I think. Yeah. Right? Like a, but, like a yeah. sign and trade or something like that. But, but they assume he's going to, because it's a chance for them to, yeah, he's going to try and make one of those $200 million deals now while yeah. he's this age. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it, it's exciting news for the Sixers. Um, just the simple fact is we got him back and we got him back and we get to, um, yeah. we got hope, but now let's talk about a team that may not have much hope. And that's the Philadelphia Flyers who are absolutely submarined who melted down as we put in the title here in the, over the past two weeks, seven straight losses. They did win tonight against the Rangers almost in one of those, like why, like at this yeah. point, like right. you, and not only did they lose, I mean, they were down six, nothing to the Canadians. The other night. Right. I think they lost nine to two, oh, right. Right. nine, three. Uh, they, they lost so bad and they lost to bad teams. They lost to the Chicago Blackhawks who were terrible. They lost to obviously Columbus, who we just talked about. They lost to Montreal twice. They've been bad, and it's been just an absolute like it's been bad goalie. It's been bad defense, bad offense. Tortorella's been trying to mix in the the captain. Obviously, we've lost some pieces to injury, but and to other things. But it put a sour taste on a season that was really fun for for eighty percent of it. I think we both kind of nailed this on the head. They were going to hang in there. They were going to. At the beginning of the season, we said that. Yeah. Yeah. They were going to be consistent. They were going to hang around, but they just weren't going to have enough to make it. But I didn't think it would just all fall out to, you know, an eight game losing streak when you were actually still, your calculations, you were still in it. Like, I didn't see that. I just had a they would just win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And they just, but they've had some issues. They've, you know, Erson, you got to give him and Tortorella has given him a lot of credit. Nobody expected him, you know, coming into the season, they were thinking maybe he would make 20 starts and that would be it. Um, But clearly they had to rely on him a lot more. They brought in the Russian, but it's, you know, just like too little, too late. And it's almost like one of those things, you know, every, the whole, um, What's his face? Tortorella's shtick is he gets in early, he weeds out the team, he figures out who can play, who can't. It run people play for him, and then it and then it wears out pretty quick, and it and it dies. Yep. Now I saw a report today. I don't know if it's a full report, but they were saying that Tortorella is safe for this year. And I almost yeah. think it should be. I mean, there he he kind of went below the belt. Um, a couple, you know, throw his team under the bus, but I guess you can take that. I did he want. because he, he's been known to. He's done it before. It's This is not out of the ordinary. No, he normally tries is. to. He normally will not. He'll do some things that you think are throwing the team under the bus, but more than likely he's trying to take the blame himself. I, I, I hear you. I just. He's but a little bit. Ago, I feel like he was saying, "Well, we don't have hockey players out there. We don't have hockey players on there." I but was he's, not, he's trying to fire them up through the media. Like I, I don't know if he's throwing. Yeah, yeah I, I he wears <laughs> people. I, yeah. I give you that. He he wears teams down over time. Right. But someone, yeah. I forget who it was. I think it was John Kincaid on the morning show. 
because he had him down in Atlanta and then, you know, followed him to Tampa. Sure. And he's like, every year he gets teams to play over their head. He stays the course. He get, he makes it four yeah. years with every – and eventually, you know, the teams make a decision on him. But I, he was pointing in a, in, a, in a way that he doesn't wear out his welcome. Um, and he doesn't throw his players on the bus. But more, more than likely what happens is time just – comes up on his yeah we'll see I, i'm with you though it, 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 he is a i'd love to go back and look at this when it's all said and done when his time's over of how he worked with this team because they're they definitely played over their heads this year again next right. year's we, gonna be the year that we expect right. a bigger movement yeah i mean i'll be interested to see if they get some you know i don't know if he'll come over next year or not but if that the the russian kid can come yeah. over that would be well in the goalie situation is the big thing. Yeah. I, I don't think we may never see Carter Hart again. And they and they were prepared for that. Yeah. They they when I say prepared, they 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 knew something was coming around the corner. And and I read some things that they when they were trying to train with the deadline, they were very clear to teams this was coming. You're gonna right. take the risk if you want to try. Because right. I never understood the noise at the deadline. Why would you even put them on the you, you get it now, but Yep. Um, all right, that's Flyers Talk. We got one more team in town, and market's coming up soon. Where are we, a week and a half away from the NFL draft? Two, or two, weeks. two and yeah. a half weeks. About two, two yeah, two weeks to this day. Two, that's exactly what two weeks, two weeks today. Yeah, and it's still a lot of noise coming out what the Eagles will do in the NFL draft. We've seen all the little pieces, and lately we saw the Reddick trade, which we talked about a couple weeks ago, and now we're looking at. You know, what does this team need the most? And are they, would they actually stand still, stand put, and draft, what is it, 22? 22. Yeah. Um, all signs point to them still looking at D back as a priority. And I think that's the right position to, to likely um, address. Based upon the age of both Slay and Bradbury, Avante Maddox is back in the house, right? Mm hmm we got him we since haven't the numbers on that. I we I don't think there's been numbers given out on that, but there's just Yeah. I haven't seen it either, but they did cut him because he was right. making too much and then they were able yeah. to bring him back. But again, I think in that role you're looking at him slot corner but maybe yeah. safety. Uh there's still talks out there and I don't know how this would happen, but there's still talks about Patrick Sertain and um what's the safety out in Denver? Justin Simmons. Simmons. I, I don't know. I mean would I take that over the pick 22? No doubt about it, because I take a proven commodity over, yeah. and they're both young enough. Um, but where do you think they land in this draft? Because right now, I they got a lot of different options. Kool Aid, like, like there, there are options out there, and I think this draft is deep in the D back world. There is. So I think a lot of people are saying that they wouldn't be surprised if they trade up. I, it just seems like how he never sits still. He always moves never. Up. I agree. Packer moves up. This is a year I think you move up because there are two corners. If they are going to go corner, which I believe that they should do, because I, I don't, I don't see how the certain thing comes to fruition. Denver would oh. be stupid to let such a because that I mean, look, and you know, the Eagles have probably already knocked on that door. One with Vic Vangio being there. Two. They wanted him over Devontae. They wanted JC Horn over Devontae. Like, and it's no offense over Devontae Smith, but they love those corners um, in yeah. 2021. So with that being said, um, there's a couple good corners. If they do move up, there's Quinion Mitchell. The only I, thing I know that I think they about love him. That, what? Yeah. I think they love him, but I, I've seen him as high as like eleven. Like yeah, yeah he's he's raising. Yeah, I, the the one thing you you wonder and worry about, it looks like he's got all uh -oh. the talent. No, nothing bad, bad, but just saying like. The oh no! Is, I uh, froze for a second. I said, uh "Oh, because I froze." Oh. I saw yeah. <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna say I, I was dropping news. No, 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 no. Just at the talent pool that he went against. Um, there is yeah concerns, but. But but okay. they also said he had a really good showing at the Senior Bowl and he locked down, yeah. you know, you know, top talent there. Him and um, I think probably a more attainable uh, corner would be Terry and Ar uh, Arnold from 
um, Alabama. Yeah. I think that would be more reasonable, probably into that 16, 17 range. If you can get up there somehow, um, they have a couple fives, they have two twos, so they can make something work. I, I would love to really have both twos, but if they can get a stud corner, um, I think you have to entertain that. I don't want to see them trading up for a tackle because the, the, the three positions of need slash, you know, that they're going to look at are corner offensive line and D end. Yeah. Um, but D end is like, they're always going to look that route tackles. They're always going to look that route. I think tackle is more realistic than D end. Um, there's a couple guys there, but like in the grand scheme of things, I really want a quarterback because they need playmakers. Yeah. And I, I still like Cooper Dijon in that mix as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and Nate Wiggins is, is probably a natural spot for 22 out of Clemson. He's like a Trent McDuffie type of pick. Who yeah. Turns out he's a pretty good corner for Kansas City. Yeah. Yo, oh, very good corner. Um, yeah. You know, we, yeah, we are, we're with you. Like, keep on going, Phillies, because we, we talked about earlier a seven and six with Strider going out, um, playing a little better ball than they have in the past two years early in the season. I think a lot of that is attributed to health. You know, with Harper intact, we said he was hurt last year. Ranger intact. I, yeah, we can keep this going. Um, they just need to fix a few, and and fix is a strong word. They just need to get. That going. Was but that and that was my thing when we talked about at the beginning of the season. They not 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 being consistent. Like if they could be consistent, everything would be fine. I think they should be nine and four. I think they've lost two games this past week. They should have should have been six and zero on that road trip. Now I know it's asking a lot, but they yeah, really, it's asking a lot. But they didn't hit in those two games. They didn't hit right, but it's yeah. just like you hit just a little bit. You're you were in both of those games. You yeah, my worry bit. is they're they're still trying to bash people to wins, and and that'll work because this team's good enough. Listen, it's they are making the, the playoffs. They are making the playoffs. Like they right. they're too talented. Yeah, um, too good. And there's not, especially with the way that the East is this year. The Central yeah. doesn't have anybody. The, they're going to be fighting with the with the teams in the West for a wild card spot, if any. Yeah, and it is funny. Bryce does need to start hitting. I, I got these double plays are killing, but he absolutely obliterated a ball today in the yeah. first inning. Exit velo at one ten. It just found a glove in a double play. I it's been happening to him a lot this year. I mean, he's but he's on, won one game single handed, right? Right. The three home run game. So yeah, yeah, it has. He'll get going. I'm not worried about him, but. It would it would be nice if he gets going a little sooner than later. I'm with you. Yeah, because I can live with some of the faults that they have, because a Harper, a Turner, they they can carry you for for stretches here. They really can. Um, but yeah, back to the Eagles. Yeah, the, you know I said Kool Aid earlier only because McKinstry's name did come up because he's big and physical. Um, I've seen him more at the end of the first round. Yeah, I'd love if you could find a way to maybe if you. Did somehow not go cornerback at 22 and he's there at 30, 31 at the end of the night and move up one of your seconds and future picks to get there. Yeah. That would be a perfect scenario for me. But otherwise, I like what you're talking about. Um, if you could get the kid from Toledo, the other kid from Alabama or Cooper Dijon, I, I think you're really in a good spot with the Eagles. Now, what – I'm looking at the you know a handful of things. I think the offensive line is intact. It's just you need depth, right? Right. Like you but, could maybe find a starting guard over um, Jack Steen, but yeah. Um, other uh, than that, maybe you don't. But you got to get some depth because right now you're pretty much Dickerson, Jurgens, the two tackles, Lane, and um, you just signed uh, yeah to a big uh, deal. So, you're four solid. Right. You I I really I think they're solid right now. You move Jurgens over in the center, hope that he can, you know, that's Jason Kelsey wanted him because that's um, you know, uh because that's who he said could play like him. Yeah. You and he got, does. But you got the tackles, they're both on like I think you're gonna get more years out of Lane Johnson than believe because there's some people around that are saying he's he wants three more years, like he wants to play for three more years and he could do it. You got my lot of for three years, maybe four years because of that deal that he just signed. They found good guards. Isaac Sayamalu was what a third or a fifth round pick. Like yeah. they, they are very good at addressing offensive line later in the draft. Now 
Tyler Steen, we don't know yet. Not doing much. Oh, I said Tyler. I said Jack. Jack. Yeah, Tyler. Yeah. But Tyler Steen, like, I think, but you, you never know. He could turn out to be a guy. Like, you're not depending on him for tackle. You're depending on him for – so I think they can find guards, interior linemen later in the draft. I, that's why I'm not – I know they always want to replenish at the at the tackle, but, like, we have bigger needs. And it's not always about need because I know Howie always tries to fill in the piece, the holes. Yeah. And then hopes to find a better one in the draft, but we really need to get a top of the line defensive back. And honestly, what would be nice is, you know, like Cooley McKinstry and Cooper DeGene. I, I've seen him all over the place, DeGene. I have. He might fall back, and maybe the maybe the Eagles are able to trade back and recoup a, you know, pick and take one of those guys or something like that, too. And that would work out good. Yeah, my my dream scenario actually is Jared Verse dropping all the way there. DM from Florida State. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we already got Josh Sweat from Florida surprise, State. Surprise, surprise, a Florida State guy. Go, but listen, eighth most pressures in all of college football, guy that's projected top 10, but is dropping on some boards. Like if he's there at 21, 22, I, I that's where I would go and then hopefully move up for a cornerback. But yeah, to Star Wars point, I was so happy for Stott because yeah. The stop we know is a guy that just makes solid, uh, productive contact most times. He's been off all, all season. And that came right after a drop ball in right field yeah. that Nick Castellano was hitting the two fielders um, colliding. Where right away I say to my sons, payback. Like when you yeah. drop a ball, you got to make them pay. And I knew Castellanos was scoring once that ball hit the ground. Yep, yep. Knew. But how cool. good. Like tonight – to see a home run out of Boehm his first of the year, yes. stop his first of the year, um, those were huge. And Boehm's was the center field. So, yeah, yes. both of them, those were huge. People have been telling me – did we talk about this? We might have. But I, some people think that Boehm could get 30. I don't think he's ever going to get 30. I've heard that too. I don't think so. People are – and here's the thing. He's he's playing for his job and, you know, because like not – not I, I say that tongue-in-cheek. No, I know what you're saying. Peter Miller is, is – is is a year or two behind, and we, Bo's what twenty six or twenty seven now. So it's like it's it it's it's proven years. They're like it's coming yeah. up. Um, yeah, but I think I, think I still think he's twenty four, twenty five. We could get. I maybe. think he had twenty last year. Maybe. I, yeah, he I, can I, get I, there. Right, he can get there. I just, I still haven't seen consistent enough from him. And yeah. Everyone was saying he's going to be a breakout player. He's going to be in contention for MVP. I I don't see it. I want to see it. I don't see it that he's going to have that good of numbers. That he's going to be you know a better hitting third baseman than like Austin Riley or something like that. I've heard some crazy things. I hope I'm wrong. I just don't see it. All right, back to NFL. One more quick thing for you. Yeah. Who? How many quarterbacks go in the top ten? Let's see. You got. Why am I blanking for a second? Oh, Caleb Taylor, Williams. Drake May. Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Jaden Daniels. That's four. What did you say in the, right. in the first round or top ten? Top, top ten. I think that's where we go. We get those four in the top. I think McCarthy yeah. – I don't think he's great, but I do think oh, – you know, there's, there's a love affair. And, and there's need, right? And quarterbacks yeah. will rise. And I think he's that riser this year like Trey Lance was a few years back. Um yeah, I, I think we see four. I, I have heard some teams think the Bears might not go Caleb, but I think they're set. I've sort of heard their GM talk. They're set. There's no way. That's now it's that situation is weird just because of the way he, the the way that Caleb Williams is, but I don't yeah, he is uh, odd. I, dude. I, what? Yeah, yeah. He's odd. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is with with him though, like I could understand, like, oh, I don't want to go to What's a what's a bad situation team right now? Arizona. That's like Arizona. Arizona. I don't I'm just trying to think like Chicago is a storied franchise and like they have talent and you saw that. Like why wouldn't why would you make a stink about going to Chicago? Because there was a lot of talk that he was having issues with Chicago. Now I know some of that's mutter, some of that, some of that comes from somewhere, but like Chicago has a good setup. Like they're they have two top 10 picks this year. Like you should be like, yes, please, Chicago. Yeah. Like, well, they, 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 the storied franchise, the Chicago Bears. Like, there's, you know, 
they were competitive at the end of the year last year and made right. like a like they upset Detroit. I want to say like they they played some good football at the end of the year. I mean, they have the first overall pick because Carolina is stupid. Yep. <laughs> like you know, uh, because they still have the ninth pick anyway. It's just it's it's nuts to think that like DJ Moore. Um, I feel like they they got somebody. They brought in another receiver, didn't they? Um, they did. So Ooh. they are. Yeah, I'm trying to think. They. It it's, wasn't. It, it's like um a, a second tier, but he's good. It'll come to me. It'll come. To I know. Me. I'm trying. Uh, it wasn't um at first. I thought it was um what's his name Ridley. Oh, Keenan. Keenan. Yep. Keenan. Keenan. yep. Keenan. And I'm calling him second tier. Yeah, yeah, I'm only calling him second tier because he's in his mm -hmm. mid low thirties. Yeah. I completely agree with you. No, no, no. No, I, I don't think of Keenan Allen as the number one just because he can't stay on the field. I mean, you talk your number ones are A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, Tyree Kill. Like, that's when I think of number one. Keenan yeah. Allen is clearly that second tier. But that's huge. Like, for being a for being a rookie quarterback to walk into D.J. Moore and Keenan Allen and um, who's their Cole Komet, who's a decent tight end. He is uh, very decent. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think. And now there? you got De DeAndre Swift. DeAndre I mean, Swift. Yeah. And uh, who was the other Jordan running back? Mooney. Mooney, but no, no, Mooney's I think in Atlanta now. Oh um, yeah, no, he did go. You're right. You're right. Um, but there was another. They have another running back, young running back, not David Montgomery, but um, no, they got the kid. Um, was it Roscoe? Khalil Herbert? Khalil, no, Herbert. Khalil Herbert. Khalil Herbert. Yeah, Khalil Herbert. And they That's they got um to walk into and they could Roshan Johnson, the Texas yes. backup to B. That's John. Right. Yeah, Robinson, uh, who I think is talented. So yeah, yeah, they're they're and they talented. could and they could fall into a uh, Roma Duzier or whatever. Like they could. I mean, they could. why they wouldn't could. you want to be in that scenario? That's insane. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be fun right. because there's there's like outside those four, I think they go in the top ten. Yeah. There's gonna be some little little spots. We don't know what we're gonna see with Michael Penix or Bo Nix yet, right. um, but there's other talks that we could see maybe six in the first round, which is a uh, you know, it's been a while since we've seen Penix, one of those trips. Sure, I think I think cracks the first round. It's really whether Bo Nix, anyone's in on Bo Nix or not. That's that's going to be. But a name for the Eagles to watch: Spencer Rattler, late round. <sighs> I'm with you. I like. I I do like Rattler, but after you got Kenny Pickett, I, I don't know that you do anything for the quarterback. True. Yeah. Yeah. The Eagles are big, you know. They think they're a quarterback factory. Yeah, factory. yeah I get it, but um, I think with the picket thing, I think you don't really have a spot for a third quarterback. You're not going to roster them on game day, right? But we'll see. I mean, if it's sixth, seventh round, and you could get away with practice squad, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, that wraps up an hour long action packed show of all four sports in town. Thanks for checking in tonight. Many of you getting us comments, uh, you know, following. Thank you so much. We are part of the Heat Ratio Sports Network. I'm Dave Gleckner. That's Mark Tomasini. We are going to be back next week getting the preview even closer for the Eagles trip, following up on how the Phillies did. Like, you know, awesome series with Pittsburgh this weekend for Gamer. And then the, I think, who is it, Detroit coming into town or Colorado? Double check here. It, it's like a lesser team, I remember. But, um, yeah, Colorado coming in town, and then the White Sox. So we got some, we got some a little stretch there where they nope. should play nope. six to seven percent ball. Those are two worst teams in baseball. Someone will try and argue with me. The A's are worse. No, those two are worse. I think. I think the A's might find a way to muster sixty wins this year. Those two, we'll see. But uh, that's it for tonight, April eleventh. We'll be back next week. Uh, with all the Philly sports talk you need with 4th and Go, Philly 4 for 4 so much more. Until then, we'll talk to you.